Opening scene, dark mist swirls around a crescent moon as eerie music plays. Cut to two witches standing in opposing circles, one bathed in light, the other in shadows. Voiceover, in the mystical battle of power, two ancient forces collide, dark magic versus white magic. What separates their strength, their purpose, and their cost? From the allure of forbidden rituals to the purity of healing spells, these witches are ready to unleash their full might. Who will emerge victorious in this spellbinding face-off? Watch as the lines between good and evil blur in a clash for ultimate dominance. The stakes are high, and the magic is real. Title screen, Witches Face-Off, Dark vs. White Magic. The Conflict. Dark Magic. Dark magic, often referred to as the forbidden craft, is a mystical practice intertwined with shadowy forces, manipulation, and the pursuit of personal power. Rooted in various cultural and historical traditions, it is characterized by its focus on curses, hexes, and the tapping of chaotic or forbidden energies. While often feared, misunderstood, and vilified, dark magic holds an enduring allure for those willing to traverse its ominous pathways. This essay explores the essence of dark magic, its practices, and its ethical implications. The Essence of Dark Magic Dark magic is a branch of esoteric practice associated with the manipulation of forces deemed unnatural, malevolent, or chaotic. It often involves calling upon spirits, demons, or energies that mainstream traditions label as forbidden. These practices are typically shrouded in secrecy, partly due to the societal stigma surrounding them and partly because the knowledge itself is said to be dangerous if misused. Central to dark magic is the idea of power, whether for protection, personal gain, or vengeance. Practitioners often channel their intentions through rituals, symbols, and spells that invoke the darker aspects of the spiritual world. Unlike other magical practices rooted in harmony and balance, dark magic often seeks to disrupt, dominate, or subvert existing orders. Practices and Tools of Dark Magic Dark magic is rich in ritualistic practices and symbolic tools, many of which are designed to amplify the practitioner's intent and connection to chaotic energies. These practices and tools often overlap with other magical systems but are applied with a unique focus on manipulation, destruction, or personal empowerment. Curses and Hexes Perhaps the most well-known aspect of dark magic, curses and hexes are spells intended to bring harm, misfortune, or discomfort to a target. These spells are often personalized to the practitioner's grievances and involve items like personal belongings of the target, symbolic representations, such as poppets or effigies, and invocations of supernatural forces. Example, a curse might involve binding a piece of paper with the target's name written on it, doused in vinegar, and placed in a dark space to symbolically sour their life. Invocation of Entities Practitioners of dark magic frequently call upon spirits, demons, or deities associated with destruction, chaos, or the underworld. These beings are believed to lend power to the caster's intentions, often in exchange for offerings or services. Example, the invocation of Lilith, a figure in Jewish folklore often associated with freedom and vengeance, might involve offerings of red wine or blood and rituals conducted under the new moon. Use of Forbidden Materials Dark magic often incorporates taboo items such as bones, graveyard dirt, or blood. These materials are thought to carry potent energy due to their connection to death, sacrifice, or the boundary between life and the afterlife. Manipulative Spells Beyond outright harm, dark magic is also used for manipulation, compelling others to act against their will. These spells often utilize mirrors, candles, and reflective surfaces to bend reality. Example, a practitioner might use a black candle, inscribed with a target's name, to symbolically gain control over their actions or decisions. Shadow Work and Self-Transformation some practitioners use dark magic for introspection, confronting their fears, 
and embracing the parts of themselves that society deems unacceptable. This aspect, sometimes called shadow work, is not inherently malevolent but focuses on integrating the darker aspects of the psyche. Philosophical and Ethical Dimensions Dark magic, by its very nature, raises complex ethical questions. Its focus on personal power, vengeance, and manipulation often clashes with moral frameworks that prioritize harm avoidance and mutual respect. However, practitioners argue that morality in magic is subjective, shaped by individual perspectives and circumstances. The question of intent. A spell's morality is often judged by its intent. While curses and hexes might seem inherently harmful, practitioners argue that they are tools of justice or self-defense. For example, a curse placed on an abuser to stop their actions might be seen as justified by the caster, even if society condemns it. Karmic Beliefs Many magical traditions warn against the use of dark magic due to the principle of karma or the threefold law, which posits that any energy sent into the world, positive or negative, returns threefold. However, dark magicians often reject this notion, asserting that power comes with responsibility and risk, not cosmic retribution. Balancing Light and Dark Some practitioners of dark magic argue that it complements lighter, benevolent forms of magic. They view the interplay between light and dark as essential for balance, with both forces necessary to understand and navigate the complexities of the human condition. Cultural Representations and Misconceptions Dark magic is a recurring theme in folklore, literature, and media, often depicted as a corrupting force pursued by those with malevolent intentions. These portrayals, while entertaining, have contributed to widespread misunderstandings about its true nature. Folklore and Mythology in many cultures, dark magic is associated with witches, sorcerers, and outcasts. For example, in European folklore, witches were believed to consort with the devil and use their powers to harm others. Similarly, in African and Caribbean traditions, practices like obia and voodoo have been unfairly stigmatized as purely malevolent forms of magic, ignoring their rich spiritual and cultural significance. Modern Media Films, books, and games often frame dark magic as an inherently evil practice, wielded by villains and antagonists. While these stories fuel popular fascination, they also oversimplify the complexities of magical traditions, painting practitioners as dangerous or corrupt. Reality versus Fiction In reality, dark magic is neither wholly evil nor devoid of moral ambiguity. Practitioners often emphasize that magic, like any tool, is shaped by the intentions of its user. A knife can harm or heal, the same applies to magic, whether dark or light. The allure of dark magic. Despite, or perhaps because of, its controversial nature, dark magic continues to captivate those seeking empowerment, protection, or revenge. Its appeal lies in its willingness to confront uncomfortable truths and embrace taboo aspects of existence. Empowerment through taboo. Dark magic empowers individuals to reclaim their agency in situations where they feel powerless. Whether through a curse, a protective charm, or a spell for personal transformation, practitioners often find strength in their ability to influence their reality. Exploration of forbidden knowledge. The study of dark magic involves delving into esoteric texts, ancient rituals, and forgotten traditions. This pursuit of hidden knowledge is intellectually and spiritually stimulating, offering insights into the human psyche and the nature of the universe. Rebellion against norms. Engaging with dark magic can be an act of rebellion against societal norms and restrictions. By embracing what others fear or reject, Practitioners assert their independence and challenge conventional wisdom. Modern Practices and Community In contemporary times, dark magic is practiced by individuals and groups across the world. The Internet has played a significant role in demystifying these practices, allowing practitioners to share knowledge, rituals, and experiences. 
online communities, websites, forums, and social media platforms host vibrant communities of dark magic practitioners. These spaces provide support, resources, and a sense of belonging for those exploring the craft. Integration with other traditions. Many practitioners blend dark magic with other spiritual or magical traditions, such as Wicca, Hoodoo, or ceremonial magic. This syncretism reflects the adaptability and evolution of magical practices. Focus on self-improvement. While often associated with curses and vengeance, modern dark magic also emphasizes self-improvement and empowerment. Practitioners use spells, meditations, and rituals to confront their fears, heal their traumas, and achieve their goals. Dark magic, with its rich history and complex philosophy, offers a unique perspective on the nature of power, morality, and the human spirit. While often misunderstood and feared, it is a legitimate and meaningful practice for those willing to explore its depths. By acknowledging the shadowy aspects of existence, dark magic allows practitioners to navigate the full spectrum of human experience, balancing light and dark in their pursuit of wisdom and transformation. This examination of dark magic provides insight into its practices, ethical considerations, and enduring appeal. It is a testament to the complexity of magic itself, a multifaceted tool that reflects the intentions, beliefs, and desires of those who wield it. White magic. White magic has long been recognized as a benevolent branch of magical practice, rooted in the principles of healing, protection, and harmony with the natural world. Unlike other forms of magic, which might aim to influence or manipulate circumstances for personal gain, white magic is often performed with altruistic intentions, aiming to help others, maintain balance, and work within the natural order. White witches, practitioners of white magic, are often seen as guardians or healers who bridge the mystical and mundane realms, offering guidance, protection, and blessings. This essay explores the foundational principles of white magic, its practices, and its role in the spiritual and magical communities. We'll also discuss the ethical framework within which white witches operate, as well as examples of common rituals and spells. The Foundation of White Magic White magic is deeply tied to positive energy and the forces of good. It is guided by the principle of harm none, reflecting a commitment to using power responsibly. White witches often draw their energy from natural sources such as the sun, moon, earth, and water, symbolizing their alignment with the rhythms of nature. The core tenets of white magic can be summarized as follows. Protection, white magic is often employed to safeguard individuals, homes, or communities from harm. This protection may be physical, emotional, or spiritual, creating boundaries against negativity or malevolent forces. Healing, white witches use their knowledge of herbs, energy work, and spiritual practices to bring about physical and emotional well-being. Healing is seen not just as addressing symptoms, but also as restoring balance and harmony. Blessings, the act of blessing involves infusing objects, people, or spaces with positive energy. White witches may bless homes, tools, or individuals to bring about peace, prosperity, and happiness. Alignment with natural laws, white magic emphasizes working in tandem with universal energies rather than imposing one's will against them. This approach ensures that practices are sustainable and ethical, honoring the interconnectedness of all life. Practices and tools in white magic. White witches utilize a variety of tools and rituals in their craft. These elements are chosen for their symbolism and energetic properties, allowing the practitioner to focus and channel their intent effectively. Sacred tools. Candles, often used in rituals, Candles symbolize light, clarity, and purification. White candles are particularly popular for their association with purity and healing. Crystals, crystals like clear quartz, amethyst, and rose quartz are believed to amplify positive energies, aid in protection, and promote emotional healing. Herbs, 
Plants such as sage, lavender, and rosemary are staples in white magic. They are used in smudging rituals, healing spells, or protective sachets. Symbols and sigils, protective symbols like pentacles, spirals, or personal sigils are drawn or inscribed to focus intentions. Rituals and Practices Casting a circle, before performing any spell work, white witches often create a sacred circle to protect against unwanted energies. The circle acts as a boundary where only positive forces can enter. Purification rituals, these include cleansing spaces or individuals with sage, salt, or water to remove negative influences. Healing spells, using candles, herbs, or energy work, white witches channel restorative energies to those in need. They may incorporate visualization, affirmations, or reiki techniques. Protective wards, objects like charm bags or talismans are crafted and charged with energy to shield against harm. Seasonal celebrations, many white witches observe the cycles of nature through festivals such as the solstices, equinoxes, and other sabbats. These celebrations deepen their connection to the earth and its rhythms. Role of White Witches, Guardians and Healers White witches see themselves as caretakers of both the spiritual and physical realms. Their roles are multifaceted. As Guardians Shielding against negativity, White Witches often help individuals or communities by setting up spiritual protections. This might include creating wards around homes or offering protective amulets. Banishing harmful influences, they perform rituals to banish negative energies, whether these arise from external sources, e.g., toxic relationships, or internal conflicts, e.g., self-doubt, fear. As healers, physical and emotional healing, many white witches integrate herbalism, crystal therapy, or energy healing into their practice. They may also serve as emotional support, offering counseling or guidance during challenging times. Spiritual realignment, white witches often help others realign with their life purpose, offering clarity and insight through divination tools such as tarot cards or pendulums. Ethical framework of white magic, the ethical practice of white magic is underscored by an unwavering commitment to integrity. White witches adhere to guidelines that ensure their magic aligns with the highest good. The rule of three, this belief holds that the energy a witch puts into the world, whether positive or negative, will return to them threefold. It serves as a powerful incentive for practitioners to act with compassion and care. Free will. Respecting others' autonomy is a cornerstone of white magic. Practitioners avoid spells that manipulate or coerce, focusing instead on empowering individuals to make their own choices. Harm none, rooted in the Wiccan reed, this principle reminds witches to consider the potential consequences of their actions and to avoid causing harm. Ritual example, a protective spell. Below is a simple protective spell that embodies the essence of white magic. Purpose, to shield oneself or a loved one from harm. Materials. One white candle. A small bowl of salt. A protective herb, e.g., rosemary or bay leaf. A clear quartz crystal. Steps. Find a quiet space where you won't be disturbed. Cast a circle to create a sacred space. Light the white candle and focus on its flame, visualizing a sphere of bright, protective light surrounding you. Sprinkle the salt around the candle, saying, By earth, I am grounded and secure. Hold the herb in your hands, charging it with your intent for protection. Place it next to the candle, saying, By nature's gifts, I am shielded and safe. Finally, hold the crystal and visualize it absorbing your protective energy. Carry it with you as a talisman. Close the circle and thank the elements or energies you invoked. Misconceptions about white magic Despite its benevolent nature, white magic is sometimes misunderstood. Common misconceptions include 
It's weaker than dark magic, white magic's focus on balance and harm-free practices is often seen as a limitation, but this perspective overlooks its profound and enduring power. The strength of white magic lies in its alignment with universal forces, making its effects deeply resonant. It's exclusively religious, while many white witches are Wiccan or follow other spiritual paths, white magic itself is a practice, not a religion. It can be performed by anyone who seeks to work with positive energies. It can solve any problem instantly. Magic, regardless of type, is not a quick fix. White magic requires patience, practice, and a willingness to act in harmony with the energies being invoked. The Modern Relevance of White Magic In today's world, white magic serves as a reminder of humanity's deep connection to the natural world and the importance of nurturing this bond. As people increasingly seek holistic approaches to health and well-being, the principles of white magic, protection, healing, and alignment resonate strongly. White witches also play a crucial role in promoting environmental awareness. Their reverence for nature often translates into advocacy for sustainable living and conservation efforts, making them stewards of both the spiritual and physical realms. White magic embodies the essence of benevolence, offering protection, healing, and blessings to those in need. White witches, as guardians and healers, dedicate their lives to working in harmony with natural and spiritual forces. By adhering to ethical principles and respecting the interconnectedness of all life, they create a practice that is as compassionate as it is powerful. In a world often fraught with chaos and discord, white magic stands as a beacon of hope and positivity. Its practitioners remind us that magic, at its core, is a celebration of life's beauty and a commitment to safeguarding it for generations to come. Tools and Spells Dark Magic Dark magic, often referred to as black magic, is a branch of mystical practice typically associated with the invocation of malevolent forces and the manipulation of energy for selfish or harmful purposes. The tools, rituals, and spells employed in dark magic are intricate, steeped in mystery, and often provoke a sense of dread or unease. This essay explores how ritual items such as cursed talismans, obsidian mirrors, and blood sacrifices are used in dark magic practices, as well as the underlying principles of spells that summon chaotic entities. The Nature of Dark Magic Dark magic draws upon energies often deemed forbidden, dangerous, or malevolent by mainstream spiritual and magical traditions. It is rooted in the idea that power can be derived from manipulating darker forces, such as demons, chaotic spirits, or primal energies of destruction. While not inherently evil, dark magic is largely defined by its intent and its willingness to disregard moral or ethical boundaries. Practitioners of dark magic often see themselves as wielders of untamed power, viewing their work as a way to transcend the limits imposed by conventional morality. This pursuit of power frequently involves utilizing ritual items imbued with symbolic and energetic significance. Ritual Items in Dark Magic Dark magic relies heavily on physical items to channel and focus intent. These items, often chosen for their connection to death, chaos, or decay, serve as conduits between the practitioner and the energies they seek to harness. Cursed Talismans Cursed talismans are objects that have been intentionally imbued with malevolent energy. These items may be enchanted through rituals involving chanting, sigil crafting, or offerings to dark entities. They are often used to harm enemies, cause misfortune, or bind spirits. Creation of Cursed Talismans The creation process typically involves channeling dark energy into an object, such as a pendant, ring, or small idol. This is achieved through symbolic acts, like inscribing the talisman with arcane symbols or soaking it in blood or ash. Purpose, a cursed talisman can be used to subtly manipulate the target's energy field, leading to illness, mental distress, or general misfortune. In folklore, such items are often said to cling to the victim, relentlessly draining their vitality. Obsidian Mirrors 
Obsidian mirrors are a staple in many dark magical practices. These black, reflective surfaces are not ordinary tools for reflection, but serve as portals to other realms or as scrying devices for gazing into the unknown. Symbolism Obsidian, a volcanic glass, is associated with darkness, transformation, and protection. Its reflective surface symbolizes the hidden aspects of reality, making it an ideal tool for divination and contacting spirits. Used in rituals, a practitioner might use an obsidian mirror to summon or communicate with demons, often through a meditative state. The mirror acts as a gateway, allowing the user to peer into dimensions that vibrate with chaotic energy. Dangers, obsidian mirrors are said to reflect not only the desired vision, but also the practitioner's inner fears and darkness. Prolonged use is believed to invite dangerous entities into the practitioner's surroundings. Blood sacrifices. Blood sacrifices are perhaps the most infamous aspect of dark magic. The offering of blood, whether from the practitioner or another source, is believed to possess immense life force, making it a potent gift to dark entities or spirits. Rationale, blood is universally seen as a life-giving substance. In dark magic, its use symbolizes a profound exchange, the practitioner offers life energy in return for supernatural assistance or power. Ritualistic use, blood sacrifices often involve intricate ceremonies, including chants, sigil marking, and the invocation of specific entities. The sacrifice can range from a simple prick of the finger to a more elaborate offering involving animals. Ethical implications, while controversial and largely condemned, some argue that the symbolic act of sacrificing represents the practitioner's deep commitment to their goal. Spells and invocations. Dark magic spells are crafted to manipulate the unseen forces of the universe. These spells often involve precise rituals, elaborate chants, and the invocation of chaotic entities, such as demons or trickster spirits. Invocation of Demons Summoning demons is a hallmark of dark magic. These rituals are not undertaken lightly, they require an in-depth understanding of the entities involved, including their preferences, strengths, and potential for destruction. Preparation before invoking a demon, the practitioner must prepare the space. This typically includes drawing protective sigils or circles to shield against unintended harm. Offerings and bargains, demons are rarely summoned without an offering, often in the form of blood, rare herbs, or cursed talismans. A bargain is struck, with the practitioner offering something of value, such as their energy or allegiance, in exchange for the demon's service. Chanting and symbols, specific chants and symbols act as a calling card for the desired entity. These are often derived from ancient grimoires and are intended to resonate with the entity's unique frequency. Chaos-spirited spells. Many dark magic spells are designed to sow chaos, disrupt harmony, or unleash destructive forces. These spells might include elements of randomness or unpredictability to reflect their chaotic nature. Binding spells, used to control or immobilize individuals, binding spells in dark magic often incorporate personal items from the target, such as hair or photographs, along with elements like black thread or wax. Hexes and curses, these spells are directed at enemies, using cursed talismans or sigils to channel malevolent energy. A common feature is the symbolic destruction of an effigy representing the target. Necromantic spells, necromancy involves communing with the dead, often to gain knowledge or to enlist the spirits in performing tasks. Rituals frequently require grave dirt, bones, or ashes. The psychology of dark magic. Dark magic operates not only on a mystical level, but also on a psychological one. The use of ritual items and spells can deeply influence both the practitioner and their target. For the practitioner, the deliberate embrace of taboo elements reinforces their sense of power and focus. For the target, belief in the magic's potency can result in self-fulfilling effects, where fear and stress manifest as real-world consequences. 
Risks and Consequences The practice of dark magic carries significant risks, both spiritual and psychological. White Magic White magic, often considered the benevolent, or light side of magical practices, is rooted in the intention of doing good, healing, and harmonizing with natural and spiritual forces. It is characterized by its focus on positive energy and ethical practices, often tied to the practitioner's spirituality or a moral code. This form of magic employs various tools and methods that symbolize and channel the practitioner's intentions. Let's explore its components in depth. Core Tools of White Magic White magic often employs tools that carry deep symbolic or energetic significance. These items are not just props, but serve as conduits for the practitioner's focus and intent. 1. Wands made from sacred trees. The wand is a central tool in many magical traditions, symbolizing authority, intention, and direction of energy. In white magic, wands are traditionally crafted from sacred trees, each imbued with specific attributes. Oak, symbol of strength and protection, often used for grounding and warding spells. Willow, associated with intuition, healing, and lunar energy, ideal for emotional healing rituals. Rowan, known as the tree of protection, it is used to repel negative energies and enhance psychic abilities. Hazel, linked with wisdom and creativity, often utilized in divination and spell work aimed at inspiration. The selection of a wand is a personal process, often guided by the practitioner's intuition or spiritual connection to a particular type of wood. Once chosen, the wand is consecrated, typically through rituals that involve elements like fire, water, or moonlight. 2. Herbs for Purification Herbs have been integral to magical practices for centuries. In white magic, they are used for their purifying, healing, and protective properties. Commonly used herbs include Sage, burned to cleanse spaces of negative energy, aligning with the element of air. Lavender, a calming herb that promotes peace and spiritual harmony, often used in healing spells. Rosemary, used for protection, clarity, and memory, it is frequently incorporated into cleansing baths or sachets. Time, associated with courage and purification, it is ideal for rituals that aim to remove fear or doubt. Herbs are prepared in various ways, burned as incense, infused into oils, steeped in teas, or simply carried in small pouches as talismans. Each method of use is chosen based on the desired outcome of the spell. 3. Symbols, Pentacles, and Protective Circles Symbols play a significant role in white magic, acting as visual anchors for energy and intention. Two of the most prominent symbols are Pentacle, representing the harmony of the five elements, earth, air, fire, water, and spirit, the pentacle is a protective symbol. It is often drawn or carved on altars, amulets, or tools. Protective circle, the magic circle is a sacred space drawn on the ground or visualized around the practitioner. It acts as a barrier against negative energies while focusing the spell's power. Circles can be marked physically with chalk, salt, or candles, or created energetically through visualization. These symbols are not merely decorative, they are potent reminders of the practitioner's connection to the divine and the natural order. Spells in White Magic Spells in White Magic are deliberate acts that use focused intention to bring about a desired outcome. Unlike the more neutral or darker aspects of magical practices, white magic spells prioritize alignment with light, balance, and ethical principles. Key components of such spells include 1. Invocation of deities or spirits of light. White magic frequently involves calling upon benevolent deities or spiritual entities for assistance. These beings are often associated with healing, protection, and wisdom. Examples include Artemis, the Greek goddess of the moon and protector of women, invoked for safety and guidance. Brigid, a Celtic goddess of healing, poetry, 
and Smithcraft, often called upon for inspiration and renewal. Archangels, such as Michael, for protection, or Raphael, for healing. Practitioners establish a respectful relationship with these entities through offerings, prayers, or rituals. The invocation process often includes lighting candles, reciting invocations, or meditating on the deity's qualities. 2. Light-focused intentions. White magic spells revolve around pure, constructive goals, such as healing, spells to mend physical, emotional, or spiritual wounds. For example, a healing spell might involve a blend of herbs like chamomile and calendula, a light blue candle symbolizing peace, and a chant focusing on recovery. Protection, using amulets, charms, or energetic shields to guard against harm. A protective spell might involve creating a protective circle and carrying a talisman infused with protective herbs. Manifestation of positivity, attracting love, peace, or prosperity through spells that align with natural rhythms, such as lunar phases or seasonal cycles. Ethical considerations in white magic. White magic practitioners adhere to a moral code emphasizing harm none or similar principles. The Wiccan Reed, often cited in Wiccan traditions of white magic, encapsulates this ethos, and it harm none, do what ye will. This philosophy requires the practitioner to consider the potential consequences of their actions carefully. The Rule of Three Many white magic traditions follow the Rule of Three, which posits that any energy sent out into the world, whether positive or negative, returns to the sender threefold. This principle encourages responsible use of magical power and fosters a focus on positive intentions. The Role of Rituals Rituals in white magic are structured ceremonies that amplify the practitioner's connection to divine energies and their own subconscious mind. These rituals often incorporate elements such as Elemental correspondences, calling upon earth, air, fire, and water to represent balance and harmony. Seasonal celebrations, aligning rituals with the cycles of nature, such as solstices, equinoxes, or full moons, to enhance their potency. Chants and affirmations, repeating sacred words or phrases to focus the mind and channel energy. For example, a ritual to invoke healing might begin with a cleansing bath infused with salt and lavender, followed by lighting a green candle, symbolizing health, and chanting affirmations of wellness. The Symbolism of Light Light is central to white magic, symbolizing clarity, truth, and divine presence. It is used metaphorically to illuminate paths, dispel darkness, and reveal hidden truths. Light-based tools include Candles, different colors carry distinct meanings, such as white for purity, green for healing, and gold for success. Crystals, quartz, selenite, and moonstone are favored for their associations with clarity, protection, and spiritual connection. Modern Practices and Misconceptions In today's world, white magic is often romanticized, but it also faces misconceptions. Some associate it solely with religious rituals, while others dismiss it as superstition. However, practitioners view it as a blend of spirituality, psychology, and personal empowerment. White magic offers a path to harness natural and spiritual forces for good, weaving together intention, ethics, and sacred tools to manifest positive change. Through its focus on harmony and light, it inspires practitioners to live in alignment with the universe's balance. Philosophical Stakes Throughout human history, the greatest conflicts, whether in myth, reality, or fiction, have often transcended physical or strategic battles. Instead, they hinge on profound moral dilemmas and questions that challenge the human spirit. In the realm of mystical warfare, where the clash of white magic and dark forces often take center stage, these questions grow even more compelling. At the heart of the battle are three pivotal ethical quandaries. Is power inherently corrupting? Can dark means ever justify a noble end? And is white magic strong enough to counter dark forces? 
These questions invite reflection not only within the fantastical settings of magic, but also in the everyday decisions and moral struggles that define the human condition. This essay delves into these timeless dilemmas, drawing from mythological, philosophical, and literary perspectives. 1. Is power inherently corrupting? The adage power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts absolutely, attributed to Lord Acton, forms the cornerstone of this moral inquiry. It suggests that the acquisition of power inherently leads to moral decay, as the individual wielding it becomes distanced from accountability and human empathy. In the context of magic, the concept is magnified, as magical power often comes with abilities that defy natural laws and human limitations. Consider the tragic arc of many literary figures such as Gollum in The Lord of the Rings. His exposure to the ring's overwhelming power transforms him from an ordinary hobbit-like creature into a tormented shadow of his former self. Here, power is portrayed not just as a tool, but as a corrupting force with a will of its own. Similarly, historical depictions of sorcerers and dark magicians often show characters initially seeking power for altruistic reasons, only to fall victim to hubris, greed, or a warped moral compass. However, the inherent corruptibility of power is not universally accepted. Philosophers such as Hannah Arendt argue that power itself is not corrupting, rather, it is the misuse of power for personal gain or domination that leads to corruption. From this perspective, magical power, like any other form of influence, depends on the intentions and moral character of the individual wielding it. Case study, the neutral power of magic. In Wiccan and neo-pagan traditions, magic is often seen as a neutral force, akin to electricity. It is neither good nor evil, but its application determines its moral weight. A practitioner of white magic might use spells to heal or protect, while another might channel the same energy for destructive purposes. This duality emphasizes that corruption is not embedded in power itself but in human nature and the choices made when wielding it. 2. Can dark means ever justify a noble end? The moral tension between means and ends is perhaps most vividly illustrated in magical conflicts where protagonists are tempted to use dark forces to achieve righteous goals. The dilemma recalls the ethical debate of utilitarianism, does the end justify the means? In mythology, Faust's bargain with the devil embodies this tension. Faust seeks knowledge and power not out of malice, but to transcend human limitations. Yet, his pact with a dark entity ultimately damns him, illustrating that pursuing noble ends through tainted means can corrupt both the seeker and their vision. This question is not confined to fiction. Historically, many rulers and revolutionaries have justified morally ambiguous actions, such as war or subterfuge, in the name of creating a better world. The same logic applies to practitioners of magic who might consider dabbling in curses or hexes to fight greater evils. Philosophical Perspectives Deontology, from a deontological perspective, championed by philosophers such as Immanuel Kant, actions must adhere to moral rules regardless of the outcome. A white magician adhering to deontological ethics would refuse to employ dark magic, even if it meant losing a battle against evil, because doing so would compromise their moral integrity. Utilitarianism. Conversely, utilitarianism focuses on the greatest good for the greatest number. Under this framework, using dark means to prevent a catastrophic outcome might be justified. For instance, if casting a harmful spell on a tyrannical oppressor could save thousands of lives, a utilitarian might argue that the act, while regrettable, is morally defensible. Case study, grey magic. The concept of grey magic blurs the lines between white and black magic, acknowledging that moral purity in a complex world is rarely absolute. Practitioners of grey magic might argue that ethical flexibility is necessary to counter dark forces effectively. However, this path is fraught with danger, as even the noblest intentions can lead to unintended consequences. The slippery slope from using dark means to becoming consumed by them underscores the importance of vigilance and self-reflection. 
3. Is white magic strong enough to counter dark forces? The third question speaks to the heart of many epic struggles in literature and mythology. White magic, often associated with healing, protection, and light, represents virtues such as selflessness, compassion, and harmony. Dark magic, by contrast, is typically rooted in destruction, manipulation, and chaos. This dichotomy raises the question, can the power of creation and preservation truly match the destructive potency of its opposite? In many stories, white magic triumphs not because of its sheer power, but because it draws strength from collective will, moral righteousness, and the resilience of the human spirit. In J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series, for example, Harry's ultimate victory over Voldemort hinges on love, sacrifice, and loyalty, forces that transcend the raw power of dark spells. The Balance of Forces The principle of duality in many spiritual traditions suggests that light and dark forces are complementary and interdependent. Taoism, for instance, emphasizes the balance of yin and yang, where opposing forces are seen as part of a greater whole. This perspective implies that white magic does not need to overpower dark forces in a conventional sense. Instead, its strength lies in maintaining balance and preventing darkness from tipping the scales. Practical Application – The Power of Restraint One of white magic's greatest strengths is its restraint. Unlike dark magic, which often seeks immediate and overwhelming results, white magic operates within natural laws and moral boundaries. This restraint can be a source of long-term strength, as it avoids the self-destructive tendencies often associated with dark magic. Pop culture representation. The concept of magical power struggles, particularly those where witches or other magical beings must choose sides, is a popular trope in fantasy literature. One standout example of this is Deborah Harkis's A Discovery of Witches, the first book in All Souls trilogy. It centers around Diana Bishop, a historian and witch who uncovers an ancient manuscript containing secrets of alchemy and magic. Throughout the series, she is thrust into a conflict between witches, vampires, and diamonds, all vying for control over the powerful knowledge hidden within the book. In a discovery of witches, witches face immense pressure as they navigate political power struggles, familial loyalty, and a deep-seated divide between magical and non-magical worlds. This theme of witches and other magical beings being caught in a tug-of-war for power is prevalent in many other books across the fantasy genre. The witches often find themselves forced to choose sides, with each faction promising power, security, or even survival, but at a cost. Below, we will explore several other books that deal with similar themes of magical power struggles, examining how the protagonists wrestle with their allegiances and the implications of their choices. 1. The Witching Hour by Anne Rice Anne Rice's The Witching Hour introduces readers to the Mayfair Witches, a powerful family of witches who have long been entangled in a supernatural web of power, murder, and secrets. Like a discovery of witches, the characters in The Witching Hour are bound by their magical heritage and must grapple with the responsibility that comes with such power. The Mayfair witches are divided, with factions vying for control over the family's magic and the centuries-old demon that possesses one of the witches. In this book, there are multiple power struggles happening on different levels, the witches battle for control over the family legacy, the struggle between witches and the demon, and even the tension between witches and outsiders who seek to exploit their powers. Much like Diana Bishop, the protagonist of The Witching Hour, Rowan Mayfair is forced to confront her inheritance and her connection to the dark forces that have shaped her family's history. The allure of power and the fear of losing control over one's destiny are recurring themes that dominate the narrative, as Rowan must decide whether to embrace her magic or reject it, all while navigating a treacherous landscape of betrayal and manipulation. The Mayfair Witches' struggle is similar to the witches in a discovery of witches in that they must contend with both external pressures, from vampires, demons, and humans, and internal conflicts about identity and loyalty. In The Witching Hour, the concept of power is complex, 
as characters often must decide between self-preservation and the pursuit of power at any cost. 2. The Crucible by Arthur Miller Although not a fantasy novel in the traditional sense, Arthur Miller's The Crucible explores a different kind of magical power struggle, the Salem Witch Trials. In this play, the characters must contend with the politics of religion, theocracy, and fear of the supernatural. In a way, The Crucible presents witches as both victims and perpetrators, caught in a system where the power dynamics of society are intricately tied to the perceived threat of witchcraft. In this context, witches are forced to choose sides based on survival. The girls who accuse others of witchcraft do so out of fear and self-interest, while others try to protect themselves from being accused by turning on their neighbors. In the play, power is both a tool and a weapon, and the characters must navigate a system where truth is often secondary to personal agendas. While the Crucible does not involve actual magic, it highlights the concept of societal and political forces using the fear of witchcraft as a mechanism for power. Much like the witches in A Discovery of Witches, who find themselves in a position where they must choose whether to embrace or reject their magical heritage, the characters in The Crucible are compelled to decide how far they are willing to go to protect themselves and their loved ones. The witch trials function as an allegory for how power struggles, whether magical or social, often demand impossible choices. 3. The Magicians by Lev Grossman Lev Grossman's The Magician series is often described as an adult version of Harry Potter, with more mature themes and darker magic. The protagonist, Quentin Coldwater, is a young man who discovers that the magical world he has always dreamt of is not all it seems. In Grossman's world, magic comes at a steep price, and the power struggles that ensue are often deadly and morally ambiguous. Like Diana Bishop in A Discovery of Witches, Quentin is confronted with the realization that magic is not a tool for personal gain or adventure but something that demands serious responsibility and attention. The magicians in this world are divided into different schools and factions, each with its own agenda, and Quentin must navigate these treacherous waters, deciding where his allegiances lie. The series explores the tension between self-interest and the collective good, and how magic can be both a means of liberation and destruction. The power struggles in the magicians are particularly poignant because they often focus on the internal conflicts of the characters. Quentin's journey is not just about choosing sides in a magical battle but also about his struggle to find meaning and purpose in a world that seems indifferent to his existence. Like the witches in A Discovery of Witches, Quentin must come to terms with the weight of his magical abilities and the consequences of his choices. The stakes are high, and the lines between good and evil are often blurred. 4. The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon Samantha Shannon's The Bone Season introduces readers to a dystopian world where clairvoyants, humans with supernatural abilities, are persecuted by a totalitarian government. In this world, magic is both a gift and a curse, and the main character, Paige Mahoney, finds herself caught in the middle of a power struggle between rival factions of clairvoyance, a dangerous underground society, and an alien race. Similar to a discovery of witches, Paige must choose between different groups who offer her power, protection, or control over her own fate. The tension between loyalty to her fellow clairvoyants and her own desire for freedom drives much of the plot, as she struggles to navigate the shifting alliances and betrayals that characterize the world she inhabits. The magical power struggle in the Bone Season is not just about external conflicts, but also about Paige's internal battle between embracing her powers and rejecting them. She must learn to control her abilities, but doing so comes with the risk of losing herself in the process. Much like Diana Bishop, Paige is faced with a world that sees her as a tool to be used in larger political and magical conflicts, and she must decide whether to succumb to these pressures or forge her own path. 5. The Black Prism by Brent Weeks In The Black Prism, the first book in the Lightbringer series, magic is based on the manipulation of light, and the world is divided into factions that control different colors of magic. The protagonist, 
Gavin Guile is the world's most powerful person, known as the prism, who can manipulate all colors of light. However, this power comes with a cost, as his magical abilities are at odds with his humanity. The political intrigue and magical power struggles in the Black Prism are central to the narrative, as Gavin must navigate the shifting allegiances of rival factions who seek to control the power of light. Similar to the witches in A Discovery of Witches, characters in the Black Prism must make difficult choices between loyalty to family, personal ambition, and the demands of power. Like Diana Bishop, Gavin Guile finds himself at the heart of a conflict that threatens the world. The political ramifications of the magical power struggles are vast and characters must choose sides in a world where trust is a rare commodity and betrayal is a constant threat. The story explores the costs of power and the toll it takes on those who wield it, making it a compelling example of a magical power struggle. Books like A Discovery of Witches tap into the universal theme of power struggles, where characters, particularly witches and magical beings, must navigate a world where allegiances are tested and the stakes are high. In each of the examples above, protagonists are forced to choose sides, whether between family, magic, love, or survival. Whether it's the dark legacy of the Mayfair witches in The Witching Hour, the societal power dynamics in The Crucible, or the morally complex choices in The Magicians and The Bone Season, these books showcase the personal and political ramifications of magical power struggles. In each case, the characters must come to terms with their identities and powers, deciding how far they are willing to go to protect what they hold dear. Ultimately, these narratives highlight how magic can be both a blessing and a curse, and how the pursuit of power often demands sacrifices that challenge personal values, relationships, and even the very nature of one's existence. Just as Diana Bishop is torn between her magical heritage and the dangers it brings, the characters in these other works must confront the complexities of their own magical worlds and decide which path to follow in the battle for power. Symbolic Resolution Face-offs, whether in literature, film, or real-life experiences, are more than just physical confrontations. They often serve as profound metaphors for internal struggles, embodying the complex dynamics between opposing forces within an individual. These face-offs symbolize battles between selfishness and altruism, control and surrender, or vengeance and forgiveness, each of which represents a broader human experience. 1. Selfishness versus Altruism At the core of many face-offs lies a conflict between selfishness and altruism, two fundamental motivations driving human behavior. Selfishness often manifests as the desire to prioritize one's own needs and desires, sometimes at the expense of others. In contrast, altruism is the selfless concern for the well-being of others, an inclination to put the needs of others before one's own. This struggle can be seen in both external conflicts between characters and in more subtle, internal battles. In literature, characters frequently face situations where they must choose between their own interests and the greater good. For instance, in many classic hero stories, the protagonist is thrust into a situation where personal gain could be achieved by betraying others, yet they must decide whether to act selflessly or selfishly. A powerful example of this is seen in stories where characters are given the choice to save themselves or sacrifice their own comfort and safety for the welfare of others. In a more modern context, the fight between selfishness and altruism can take on nuanced forms. For instance, the rise of individualism in contemporary society often fuels selfish behavior, as people are encouraged to focus on their own success and happiness. However, in times of crisis or social upheaval, the human tendency to come together for the common good prevails, emphasizing altruistic actions that aim to benefit society as a whole. These face-offs also manifest on a psychological level. A person might struggle internally between choosing self-interest or engaging in acts of kindness toward others. The metaphorical face-off between these two forces can determine the course of one's relationships, career choices, and overall sense of fulfillment. Altruism, while requiring self-sacrifice, 
often leads to a deeper sense of satisfaction and connectedness, while selfishness may provide temporary gratification but ultimately leaves an individual feeling isolated and disconnected. 2. Control versus Surrender Another powerful metaphor in face-offs is the battle between control and surrender. Control represents the desire to manage one's environment, emotions, and circumstances, while surrender embodies the acceptance of the unpredictable nature of life and the willingness to let go of personal control. This dynamic plays out not only in external conflicts but also within the psyche, where individuals must navigate their desire to direct every aspect of their lives versus the need to relinquish control to external forces, be it fate, a higher power, or the flow of life itself. In many narratives, characters are confronted with the realization that control is an illusion. This is particularly evident in the context of trauma, loss, or existential challenges. A common storyline involves a protagonist who spends much of their life trying to control their surroundings, whether it's through perfectionism, manipulation, or force, but ultimately faces a situation that is beyond their ability to manage. At this moment, the character must decide whether to continue struggling for control or to surrender to the situation, embracing vulnerability and acceptance. Consider stories of personal growth, where characters are forced to confront their rigid need for control. These narratives often emphasize the importance of releasing this control in order to heal or grow. This might look like a person surrendering to the reality of a difficult situation, trusting that life will unfold in its own time, or allowing themselves to be vulnerable and open to new experiences. The face-off here is one of resistance versus acceptance, and the resolution often leads to a deeper understanding of one's own limits and the beauty of letting go. On a societal level, the balance between control and surrender is particularly relevant in situations of power dynamics and governance. Dictatorships or authoritarian systems often embody a collective desire for control, while democratic societies may emphasize the need for surrender in the form of trust in institutions or the will of the people. The tension between individual freedom and societal rules can create powerful metaphors for the larger control versus surrender face-off. 3. Vengeance versus Forgiveness The conflict between vengeance and forgiveness is one of the most universal and profound face-offs in human experience. Vengeance is the desire to inflict harm on someone who has wronged you, driven by a need for justice, retribution, or the assertion of power. Forgiveness, on the other hand, is the act of letting go of resentment or anger toward someone who has caused harm, often out of compassion or a desire for peace. This dynamic is central to many epic tales, where protagonists struggle with the urge to seek revenge versus the higher path of forgiveness. In many stories, the hero or central character is wronged in a profound way, by betrayal, violence, or some other form of injustice. The desire for revenge often emerges as a natural response, a way to right the perceived wrong and regain control over the situation. Yet, as the story unfolds, the character is often faced with the realization that vengeance will not bring true peace or resolution, and might only perpetuate cycles of pain. In the works of authors like William Shakespeare, the tension between vengeance and forgiveness is explored with great depth. In Hamlet, for example, the titular character struggles with the desire for vengeance against his uncle Claudius, who murdered his father. Hamlet's internal face-off between vengeance and forgiveness reflects the psychological toll that the pursuit of revenge can take on a person's soul. It ultimately raises the question of whether vengeance is truly just, or whether forgiveness might be the higher, more liberating path. In contrast, stories of redemption often highlight the healing power of forgiveness. Characters who choose to forgive their enemies, often after enduring great suffering, find a sense of peace and emotional freedom. In these cases, forgiveness represents not just a moral choice but a transformative process that allows for emotional healing and personal growth. Through forgiveness, individuals release the grip that resentment and anger have on their hearts, making room for compassion, understanding, and reconciliation. 
The Vengeance Forgiveness Face-Off is not limited to grand epic narratives, it is a common internal struggle for many people in real life. For example, someone who has been wronged by a close friend or family member might grapple with the desire to get back at them, or might feel justified in harboring resentment. On the other hand, choosing forgiveness can often lead to emotional release and the restoration of relationships. This internal conflict requires individuals to confront their own feelings of powerlessness, vulnerability, and moral compass, and make a conscious decision to either let the cycle of vengeance continue or break it with the act of forgiveness. 4. Metaphor in personal struggles. In daily life, the face-off between selfishness and altruism, control and surrender, or vengeance and forgiveness often manifests as personal dilemmas. These face-offs are not simply external battles but often occur within the psyche, where individuals must weigh their desires against their moral beliefs or personal growth goals. For example, when faced with a decision that could lead to personal gain at the expense of others, an individual might experience an inner face-off between selfishness and altruism. The decision to act with integrity and fairness, or to exploit others for personal advantage, is a metaphorical battle between two conflicting parts of the self. This inner conflict can be agonizing but often results in personal growth when the individual chooses the more ethical, altruistic path. Similarly, in moments of stress or uncertainty, people may feel an overwhelming urge to control every aspect of their environment. This need for control can be exhausting and counterproductive, as it fails to acknowledge the unpredictable nature of life. Learning to surrender, whether through acceptance, faith, or simply letting go of rigid expectations, can be a transformative process that leads to greater peace of mind and emotional stability. The battle between vengeance and forgiveness can also be an ongoing struggle in personal relationships. Whether it's a long-standing grudge with a colleague, a betrayal by a loved one, or an unresolved conflict, the desire for revenge can poison relationships, leading to cycles of bitterness and hurt. However, choosing forgiveness is not always easy. It requires confronting the pain, understanding the motivations of the other person, and letting go of the need for retribution. The choice to forgive, however, can bring about profound healing, not just in the relationship, but within the individual. Face-offs in literature, film, and real life are much more than simple clashes between characters or opposing forces. They are metaphors for the deep and complex internal struggles that define the human experience. Whether it's the battle between selfishness and altruism, control and surrender, or vengeance and forgiveness, these face-offs represent the core challenges we face in navigating our emotions, relationships, and sense of self. Through these metaphors, we gain insight into the tensions that shape our behavior, and through understanding and confronting them, we find the potential for growth, healing, and transformation. Closing scene, a glowing book closes as sparks of light and shadow dissipate. Soft, mystical music plays. Voiceover, the clash of dark and white magic has shown us that power comes with choices, each path shaping destiny in its own way. Which side would you choose? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this magical journey, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more spellbinding content. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss what's brewing next. Until next time, stay curious, stay powerful, and remember, the magic is always within you. Screen fades out with glowing text, subscribe for more mystical adventures.